Tablet 10. The tavern keeper, Suduri, who lives by the seashore. She lives. The pot stand was made for her. The golden fermenting vat was made for her. She is covered with a veil. Gilgamesh was roving about, wearing a skin, having the flesh of the gods in his body, but sadness deep within him looking like one who has been traveling a long distance. The tavern keeper was gazing off into the distance, puzzling to herself, she said, wondering to herself, that fellow is surely a murderer. Where is he heading? As soon as the tavern keeper saw him, she bolted her door, bolted her gate, bolted the lock, but at her noise, Gilgamesh pricked up his ears, lifted his chin to look about, and laid his eyes on her. Gilgamesh spoke to the tavern keeper saying, tavern keeper, what have you seen that made you bolt your door? Bolt your gate, bolt the lock. If you do not let me in, I will break your door and smash the lock. The wilderness, Gilgamesh. The tavern keeper, Siduri, who lives by the seashore, she lives. The pot stand was made for her. The golden fermenting vat was made for her. She is covered with a veil. Gilgamesh was roving about, wearing a skin, having the flesh of the gods in his body, but sadness deep within him, looking like one who has been traveling a long distance. The tavern keeper was gazing off into the distance, puzzling to herself. She said, wondering to herself, that fellow is surely a murderer. Where is he heading? As soon as the tavern keeper saw him, she bolted her door, bolted her gate, bolted the lock. But at her noise, Gilgamesh pricked up his ears, lifted his chin to look about and then laid his eyes on her. Gilgamesh spoke to the tavern keeper saying, tavern keeper, what have you seen that made you bolt your door, bolt your gate, bolt the lock? If you do not let me in, I will break your door and smash the lock. The wilderness, Gilgamesh, gate. Gilgamesh said to the tavern keeper, I am Gilgamesh, I killed the guardian. I destroyed Humbaba who lives in the cedar forest I slew lions in the mountain passes. I grappled with the bull that came down from heaven and killed him. The tavern keeper spoke to Gilgamesh saying, if you are Gilgamesh, who killed the guardian, who destroyed Humbaba, who lived in the cedar forest, who slew lions in the mountain passes, who grappled with the bull that came from heaven and killed him, why are your cheeks emaciated, your expression desolate. Why is your heart so wretched, your features so haggard? Why is there such sadness deep within you? Why do you look like one who has been traveling a long distance so that ice and heat have seared your face? You roam the wilderness. Gilgamesh spoke to her. To the tavern keeper, he said, tavern keeper, should not my cheeks be emaciated? Should my heart not be wretched? My features not haggard? Should there not be sadness deep within me? Should I not look like one who has been traveling a long distance? And should ice and heat not have seared my face? Should I not roam the wilderness? My friend, the wild ass who chased the wild donkey, panther of the wilderness, and Kidu, the wild ass who chased the wild donkey, panther of the wilderness. We joined together and went up into the mountain. We grappled with and killed the bull of heaven. We destroyed Humbaba who lived in the cedar forest. We slew lions in the mountain passes. My friend whom I deeply love, who went through every hardship with me. And Kidu, whom I love deeply who went through every hardship with me. The fate of mankind has overtaken him. 
Six days and seven nights I mourned over him and would not allow him to be buried until a maggot fell out of his nose. I was terrified by his appearance. I began to fear death and so roam the wilderness. The issue of my friend oppresses me. So I have been roaming long trails through the wilderness. The issue of Enkidu, my friend, oppresses me. So I have been roaming long roads through the wilderness. How can I stay silent? How can I be still? My friend whom I love has turned to clay. Am I not like him? Will I lie down never to get up again? Gilgamesh spoke to the tavern keeper saying, so now tavern keeper, what is the way to Utanapishtim? What are its markers? Give them to me, give me the markers. If possible, I will cross the sea. If not, I will roam through the wilderness. The tavern keeper spoke to Gilgamesh saying, there has never been Gilgamesh any passage whatever. There has never been anyone since days of yore who crossed the sea. The only one who crosses the sea is valiant Shamash, except for him who can cross. The crossing is difficult. Its ways are treacherous. And in between are the waters of death that bar its approaches. And even if Gilgamesh, you should cross the sea, when you reach the waters of death, what would you do? Gilgamesh, over there is Urshanabi, the ferryman of Utanapishtim. The stone things are with him. He is in the woods picking mint. Go on, let him see your face. If possible, cross with him. If not, you should turn back. When Gilgamesh heard this, he raised the ax in his hand, drew the dagger from his belt, and slipped stealthily away after them. Like an arrow, he fell among them, the stone things. From the middle of the woods, their noise could be heard. Urshanabi the sharp-eyed saw. When he heard the ax, he ran toward it. He struck his head. Gilgamesh. He clapped his hands and his chest while the stone things, the boat, waters of death, broad sea in the waters of death to the river, the boat on the shore. Gilgamesh spoke to Urshanabi, the ferryman. You, Urshanabi spoke to Gilgamesh saying, why are your cheeks emaciated, your expression desolate? Why is your heart so wretched, your features so haggard? Why is there such sadness deep within you? Why do you look like one who has been traveling a long distance so that ice and heat have seared your face? Why you roam the wilderness? Gilgamesh spoke to Urshanabi saying, Urshanabi, should not my cheeks be emaciated, my expression desolate? Should my heart not be wretched, my features not haggard? Should there not be sadness deep within me? Should I not look like one who has been traveling a long distance? And should ice and heat not have seared my face? Should I not roam the wilderness? My friend who chased wild asses in the mountain, the panther of the wilderness? And Kidu, my friend, who chased wild asses in the mountain, the panther, of the wilderness. We joined together and went up into the mountain. We grappled with and killed the bull of heaven. We destroyed Humbaba, who dwelled in the cedar forest. We slew lions in the mountain passes. My friend, whom I love deeply, who went through every hardship with me. Enkidu, my friend, whom I love deeply, who went through every hardship with me. The fate of mankind has overtaken him. Six days and seven nights I mourned over him and would not allow him to be buried until a maggot fell out of his nose. I was terrified by his appearance. I began to fear death and so roam the wilderness. The issue of my friend oppresses me, so I have been roaming long trails through the wilderness. The issue of Enkidu, my friend, oppresses me, so I have been roaming long roads through the wilderness. 
How can I stay silent? How can I be still? My friend whom I love has turned to clay. In Kidu, my friend whom I love has turned to clay. Am I not like him? Will I lie down never to get up again? Gilgamesh spoke to Urshanabi saying, Now, Urshanabi, what is the way to Utanapishtim? What are its markers? Give them to me. Give me the markers. If possible, I will cross the sea. If not, I will roam through the wilderness. Urshanabi spoke to Gilgamesh saying, It is your hands, Gilgamesh, that prevent the crossing. You have smashed the stone things. You have pulled out the retaining ropes. The stone things have been smashed. Their retaining ropes pulled out. Gilgamesh, take the axe in your hand, go down into the woods and cut down 300 punting poles, each 60 cubits in length, strip them, attach caps, and bring them <clears throat> to the boat. When Gilgamesh heard this, he took up the axe in his hand and drew the dagger from his belt and went down into the woods and cut 300 punting poles, each 60 cubits in length. He stripped them and attached caps and brought them to the boat. Gilgamesh and Urshanabi boarded the boat. Gilgamesh launched the Magilu boat and they sailed away. By the third day, they had traveled a stretch of a month and a half and Urshanabi arrived at the waters of death. Urshanabi said to Gilgamesh, hold back Gilgamesh, take a punting pole, but your hands must not pass over the waters of death. Take a second Gilgamesh, a third and a fourth pole. Take a fifth Gilgamesh, a sixth, a seventh pole. Take an eighth Gilgamesh, a ninth, a tenth pole. Take an eleventh Gilgamesh and a twelfth pole. In twice 60 rods, Gilgamesh had used up the punting poles. Then he loosened his waist cloth for Gilgamesh stripped off his garment and held it up on the mast with his arms. Utanapishtim was gazing off into the distance, puzzling to himself, he said, wondering to himself, why are the stone things of the boat smashed to pieces? And why is someone not its master sailing on it? The one who is coming is not a man of mine. I keep looking, but not. I keep looking, but not. I keep looking. Utanapishtim said to Gilgamesh, why are your cheeks emaciated, your expression desolate? Why is your heart so wretched, your features so haggard? Why is there such sadness deep within you? Why do you look like one who has been traveling a long distance so that ice and heat have seared your face? You roam the wilderness. Gilgamesh spoke to Utanapishtim saying, should not my cheeks be emaciated, my expression desolate? Should my heart not be wretched, my features not haggard? Should there not be sadness deep within me? Should I not look like one who has been traveling a long distance and should ice and heat not have seared my face? Should I not roam the wilderness? My friend who has chased wild asses in the mountain, the panther of the wilderness, and Kidu, my friend who chased wild asses in the mountain, the panther of the wilderness, we joined together and went up into the mountain we grappled with and killed the bull of heaven. We destroyed Humbaba who dwelled in the cedar forest. We slew lions in the mountain passes. My friend whom I love deeply, who went through every hardship with me. And Kidu, my friend whom I love deeply, who went through every hardship with me. The fate of mankind has overtaken him.